So we've modeled acquisition. Uh, next, sorry, we've modeled retention. Uh, next, we'd like to model revenue per user so that we can get our best guess of what uh, the cadence of revenue should be. So again, this is the actual revenue data that we're getting from the firm. We have our best guess of the total number of customers that are alive each quarter. It's just the sum of the customers that are alive across all the different acquisition cohorts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to assume a simple time series model for revenue per user. Now remember, customers uh, pay revenue at the end of each quarter. So essentially, you, know, you give me the total number of customers, you give me revenue per user, and I can give you back the amount of revenue that's generated uh, by that particular uh, cohort of customers over time. So again, we can see for cohort number four, <coughs> we had 60.4 million customers as of the fourth calendar quarter. ARPU was 5.4. That gives us $326 million of revenue from that cohort in that calendar quarter. And just as with the customers, the total amount of revenues is then equal to the total sum of the revenues uh, associated with all acquisition cohorts within a particular calendar quarter. So that's what we're seeing over here. So this model is assuming a simple linear functional form for ARPU, and that ARPU in a particular quarter is equal to some intercept term B0 plus B1 times the calendar quarter number. And that's why each period I'm just again summing up an intercept term plus a slope multiplied by the quarter that we're in. And just like with the retention process, I am going to estimate the parameters of that spend model by minimizing the spend sum of squared error by changing these two parameters. That's it. So now if we were to take expected total revenues, which are shown over here, and compare those to actual revenues, we can again see very tight correspondence uh, between those two.